Facebook family again. Welcome to the church service this morning. And we're going to hop in to God's Word. And I titled this sermon, Growing in Spiritual Wisdom and Understanding. Growing in spiritual wisdom and understanding. Well, it's hard to believe that we only have three more days of summer left. Officially. Officially. But uh, Wednesday, fall begins. And praise God for Michigan Falls, right? I mean, praise God. Look at that, right? We're, pretty soon we're going to be able to see that. For real. Like driving down the road. Uh, especially in our area in southeast Michigan. We have lots of woods around us, and praise God for Michigan Falls. And so continue to enjoy the, the, the great outdoors, and we're just cursing that snow stuff in Jesus' name. I'm just saying that out loud right now. Just like, Lord, just like, hey, boom, none of it. Amen to that, none of it. But we might be planning a church service in Florida, just so you know. Anyways, <laughs> we'll announce that soon. We'll throw a fishing trip in there as well, right? Praise God for the beautiful seasons that we do have in Michigan. Well, before I hop into the sermon, I want to point out our different channels. And some people, you know, they uh, want to know this information. We have a YouTube channel. If you hit subscribe to it, you'll be notified when the sermon gets uploaded and or a message. We have our website that we're currently still updating uh, into the fall. We, of course, have our Elmont Vineyard Church Facebook page. If you hit like, um, you will get notifications as well. And, of course, we have our church application. And just before, so I don't have to say it again, just before we uh, get into the sermon, there's lots of commentary and there's lots of good study questions associated with this sermon on your church app. So download that application and you will get a lot of background information and personal study questions that you can do in your personal devotions. Go to your app store, Elmont Vineyard Church, and download it. You know how to do that, I suppose. If you don't, uh, get a hold of the office and we'll help you. Next Sunday, we're starting a new sermon series, Living Empowered. Living Empowered. Want to live empowered, right? We're going to talk about that biblically, from a biblical perspective, that we want to live uh, as empowered evangelicals with the power of the Holy Spirit. It's living in us, and so we need to use that power to navigate our lives, even the things that we speak out loud into the atmosphere. So we're going to get into all sorts of that stuff and talk about living empowered. And so the title of the sermon today is Growing in Spiritual Wisdom and Understanding. Before I hop into the book of Colossians in just a little bit, I want to read uh, something uh, theologian P.W. Comfort said about the brain. The human brain is amazing, he says. God has created us with the ability to think, react, reason, consider, meditate, learn, Imagine, understand, philosophize, know, perceive, evaluate, theorize, reflect, predict, and communicate. Enamored with the incredible power of our minds, however, we can become complacent in our wisdom, proud of our mental abilities, and reliant on ourselves. Now, there's just a few things that pop out to me as, they, as I reflect on theologian Comfort's words there, and three of these things are, we can become complacent in our wisdom, can't we? And not just complacent in our wisdom, but complacent also in our spiritual lives, where we relax some things and go back to some unhealthy habits or unhealthy speech from our mouths, whatever it may be, we can become complacent. And it is so easily in a darkened world to fall back into bad, bad habits and bad attitudes, isn't it? Right? We can become complacent in our wisdom. We can 
uh, be proud of our mental abil- abilities, right? Uh, pride cometh before a fall, right? That's what Scripture says. And so we can become proud in our mental abilities. And there's nothing, you know, the Lord gives us things and we do things. There's not, we could be proud of our successes in Christ, but it shouldn't be just on self. Like, look at me, I'm accomplishing much thing. Then we can become complacent. And then the last one I want to bring out in these words, then we can become reliant on ourselves. Right? That's what happens. You put those all together, then we become, we can become reliant on ourselves where we say, I can do that. Right? I, you know, and then we can, in our prayer life, how many of you have ever said, well, and maybe you don't say this out loud, but you say it in, our, in your mind, well, I'm not going to bother God with that stuff. God don't, God, you know, God's got bigger things to worry about. I hear that from some of you, just to be honest, right? I say that to, I, I, I've said that. You know, God really doesn't care about that. He's got bigger things to worry about. God cares about everything in your life. Everything. I mean, the simple headache that you have, seriously. Uh, the, the, the backache, the, your job situation, whatever it may be, your financial situation, the Lord cares about that and He wants to hear from you. If you don't believe me, read the book of Psalms. The psalmist even complains. Uh, the, the psalmist even has some sort of uh, anger directed towards the living God and he, he puts it out in the psalm and says, Lord, I don't understand what's going on in my life. But Lord, I trust you. And you do. So friends, help, let us not become weary. Let us not become complacent. Let us not become reliant on ourselves. Because let me just tell you something. That leads to spiritual disaster in our lives. Spiritual disaster. You put those all things together and it calls for spiritual disaster in our lives. Let's pray. Jesus Lord, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your word. Lord, some of our attitudes need to be changed. Some things in our lives need to fall away, and Christ needs to rise up in front of them, Lord. And so even in prayer right now, Lord, we lift those things, Heavenly Father, uh, that are negative, uh, whether it's uh, a mind issue, emotional issue, Lord, a, a bad habit, Lord, we lift those things up, And we put the cross of Jesus Christ and the power of your blood over that right now. Lord, we ask for forgiveness of that in Jesus' name. And we ask, Lord, that you would fill us with your goodness and your righteousness and your self-control. So, Lord, let us hear from your word this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That's right. We can become complacent. I know I can. Here's the definition of complacent. Marked by self-satisfaction. Now listen to these words. Marked by self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by unawareness. Unawareness. See, that complacency leads to unaware things in our lives. Unawareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. Right? Right? And we become unaware. And I'm a man that's been married for 30 years and my wife makes me aware of something sometimes. Praise be to God. I'm serious about that. Because I can become complacent. I can start relying on myself. And I become unaware of even what I'm doing at times. Right, Christians? And my wife will give me that, you know, that holy nudge that we don't like. Right, guys? That, that holy nudge. That holy nudge like, hey, have you prayed today? Why don't you just go back to your room and read your Bible some more? And then the Holy Spirit speaks to me because I become complacent. You know, we think of complacency over a long period of time. But let me tell you something. We can become complacent on a daily basis, right? A daily thing where we push God to the side 
and we accomplish everything that we have, and then we give God a sliver. God doesn't want a sliver of us. He wants all of us. He doesn't want just our arm on a Sunday morning raising it up, right? He wants two arms and a chest and a heart and legs and a body and a mind that serve Him and love Him each and every day. That's what our Lord wants from us. Why does He want that for us? Because that's the best thing for us, to love the Lord with all of our heart, mind, body, and soul, right? That's the best thing for us. If we start living like that as Americans, we will have a revival sweep across this nation, guaranteed, because God's word doesn't return back void, and we know that. So let us not become complacent. So let me put it into real terms for you. This word complacent, and this is in your app. If you've missed it, you can find it there. We can become so wrapped up in our own little worlds We neglect the most important things in life. Faith, family, and other relationships. Now listen. When we neglect the most important things, we become a danger to ourselves and others without even realizing it. A danger to ourselves and others. Do you have or know someone in your life that you thank God for? Uh, Just show a hand. I'm in multiple people, right? We got hands up all over. That's great. I I, I mean, there's so many people that I thank God for on an individual uh, basis that I can't even uh, start to begin to name people. So I'm not going to name anyone in this room. Because you say, well, he didn't pick me, right? And Lois is babbling over here. I don't know what she's saying. Because when Lois starts to talk, I go on this side. See how that works? It's an art. Anyways, I love you, Lois. Yes, yeah, so I, there's this guy named Jim Poole. And he's a pastor at the Renaissance Vineyard Church. It's called Renaissance now. It was called Royal Oak Vineyard Church. And he was a church planter and. Here's the deal, probably in 1998, uh, the Lord called me into the ministry of Jesus Christ while I was working at Ford Motor Company. He said, I want you to, I want you to leave more Ford Motor Company, I want you to go into school, you got three, I know you got three children, Brad, but I want you to go to school and study my word and prepare yourself to go into ministry. And so I said, yes, Lord. I said, yes, Lord, and so I did that, and so that was a long journey. And on top of it all, get this, on top of of all that, the Lord said, I want you to leave the church that you currently have been at most of your life. And I want you, I got some different direction for you. And so I'm like, really? Really, Lord? You want me to leave, you know, leave my job and leave, you know, the church family that I've grown fond of and a family of, but Lord, okay, if you say so, I will. And so I began, we began a new journey in our lives, and, and we, we left our church, and we left it well, and so we began to, to, to visit other churches and ministries that we had some long stays at, and we had great uh, ministry connections, and we still have those ministry create, uh, connections to this day in Lapeer County. Met many pastors, but I was always going into a church because God called me out, and he was calling me in, Right? And I was always going to these different churches that we were visiting, and I was looking at their theology, and I was saying to the Holy Spirit as I would enter there, and as we would say, okay, Lord, is this the place you want? Is this this where you want me to fly my wings? And Lord, whether you keep me in Michigan or send me out, whatever you want, Lord. And the Lord kept saying me, year after year after year, there was about three years there, No, no, and no. I don't like to be saying no, no, right? You don't like when God says no. Open up that door, Lord. No, because he knows what's behind that door. And sometimes what's behind that door is dangerous to us. 
And so we got to trust God in that when he says no. Well, anyways, long story short, I prayed to God, and I, was, I, I, I will tell you, it was a tough, difficult time in my life where I said, God, you called me out and you're calling me in, but where are you calling me to? And then I read uh, online, I was looking at some things, and I was reading a, a book, Surprised by the Spirit of God, and it, it had a vineyard name in there, and Jack Deere, who wrote the book, uh, uh, went to a vineyard church, and I said, vineyard church, I've never even heard of that thing. Vineyards are out there with grapes, right? <laughs> I'm like, where's the nearest vineyard church? I'll go, Lord. The Lord, the Holy Spirit directed us, so we went all the way to Royal Local. We're living in Dryden. So we went there, and I met this man, this pastor named Jim Poole. And Jim Poole, he's a really cool dude. And right, no kidding, three years, right? Three years, like, going and staying and having conversations with pastors, and the Lord just, just said no. The first Sunday we walked in the doors and felt the Spirit there, the Lord said, yes, this is where I want you. Share your vision with the pastor, and here's where the road that you're going on. I didn't understand it all. I'm thinking, this guy is going to think I'm a really crazy dude. The first Sunday I come to your church, I'm going to go up to him and say, the Lord called me to be a pastor. I'm sure he's heard that before, right? So I say that to him, and he says, hey, wow, that's great. Let's meet. Let's connect. And so I shared my heart with Jim Poole, and you know what he said to me after all that? After he's a thinker, and he closes his eyes sometimes, and he thinks, and he's hearing from the Spirit. And he said to me, and I'll never forget it, I believe in that. I believe in that. And he took me literally underneath his wings. And he invited me to area pastoral meetings. He invited me to come and do devotionals. He invited me to lead small groups and ministries. And he took me underneath his wing. And then I flew our wings, right? And I thank God for Jim Poole. And in your reflection questions, in your devotional, in your app, you're going to see a question in there. Who do you thank God for? Seriously. And maybe you need to let someone know who blessed your life. It could have been 25 years ago. It could have been 50 years ago. It could have been that little Sunday school teacher, right, that spoke something, and maybe they've never heard from you that you thank them for that love and encouragement they gave you to help you fly your wings in life. And I say that and share that story this morning because the Apostle Paul says to the church in Colossae, I thank God for you. The Apostle Paul says that to the church. Turn with me in your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 2 through 6 for beginners and work our way through some different things this morning. These lights help. I can really see the Bible. The only problem is it doesn't help my eyes. Here's Apostle Paul speaking. I, here's the thing. I thank God for you. He says to the whole, we'll pick it up in verse 2 and go to verse uh, 7a. To the holy and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae. Grace and peace to you from God our Father. And Paul had a, he just had an amazing way of, of, of writing letters, his epistles to the churches. And he would say to the holy and faithful brothers and sisters in Ephesus or whoever, uh, to the church in Philippi and so on and so forth, just to encourage them and build them up. He says, grace and peace to you from God our Father. And he says, we always, verse 3, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you because we have heard. He's saying to them, I thank God for your faith in Jesus Christ. He's telling them that. And I thank God for the Elmont Vineyard Church Family. Amen? It's blessed my life. 
Uh, We're doing the works of Jesus Christ here, advancing His kingdom work. And we thank God for one another because we have each other's backs. And so that's what Apostle Paul says. He says, I thank God for you, brothers and sisters, because we have heard, listen, we have heard, we've heard something about the Elmont Vineyard Church. We heard that they do the works of Jesus Christ, that they share the light of the gospel. We have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love you have for all the saints. Verse 5. The faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up in you. Do you have faith, love, and hope stored up in you? We should. Faith, love, and hope. Faith in Jesus Christ. The love of the Father being reflecting on us in the hope of the world. We have the hope of the world, friends. Don't you know that? We have the hope of the world in a downcast world that is lost. We have the answer. His name is Jesus. You want to have a transformed life? You want to leave a a, a powered-filled life? His name is Jesus Christ our Lord, and He will fill you with His Spirit, and He will eradicate any evil or nonsense in your life. I guarantee it. Because you want to know why? He did it to me. And Paul says, we thank God for you, because you folks are filled with faith. You folks are filled with love. You both are are filled with the hope of the gospel of Christ. And heaven hears it. Up for you in heaven that you have already heard about the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. And here's the truth. He says this, all over the world, this gospel, that's the gospel of Christ, is bearing fruit and growing. Don't let the media outlets tell you any other way in any different opinion. Nothing will ever stop a mighty move of God. The gospel and miraculous signs and wonders is still occurring. It will, nothing can stop God. In fact, God mocked Satan on the cross because he raised from the dead. Satan said, we killed God. God said, yeah, right. And the third day he rose from the dead. This gospel is bearing fruit and growing just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and understood God's grace in all its truth. You learned it from our dear brother. Paul thanked them. But he was also very concerned about the worldly influences that were invading their faith. And let me share a little snapshot of their context uh, of what they were facing. So he thanked them and he pointed out some very important things in there in just that short little opening monologue to the church at Colossae. But he was concerned because he knew what was going on in the background, right? Right? Now, in America here, we have lots of stuff going on in the background. And I'm not going to so much go off the rails this morning. But I went a little bit off last week, and there's more to come. I got some notes I'm taking at home anyways, right? Let me, so he was concerned. He pointed out the good things, but he was concerned for the Christians. And let me just read this. Christians were the minority, And they were considered underclass citizens who hadn't been enlightened to the spiritual world of the gods and goddesses. Relics and religious ceremonies, really religious parties, that's what they were, ruled the atmosphere. The philosophical system of Gnosticism taught salvation could be obtained by gnosis, that is knowledge, instead of faith. So, Know thyself. We're going to see that in a minute. It would have been a wicked city to live in and raise a Christian family. In modern day terminology, the woke 
culture surrounded the Christians. Are you hearing me this morning? Let's press further in Colossians as the Apostle Paul encourages the believers. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians 1.9. So that's the background. These people are being hard-pressed on every, uh, every side. God and goddesses, uh, literally they would open up their windows if they had them or walk down the, the streets and, and statues and idolatry was occurring all over the place. And Paul knew this. He knew they needed to be encouraged. He knew they were maybe even uh, questioning their faith and questioning the knowledge of Christ and the things of Christ. And he said this to them, verse 9, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. Now, here's what I say. Don't stop praying for the ones you think went wayward and are lost and maybe, just maybe, you have given up on that person or that family member. And it may be for a very good reason. They burned you, right? They burned you. They used you. They used your money. Whatever the case may be. Here's the, the heart of the gospel. God still loves them. Okay, I'm just telling you to be, I know they hurt, God still loves them. And I'm not telling you that you have to be best friends with them and be hunky-dory, but don't stop praying for them because God has not ever given up on you. And that's what Paul's saying. We don't stop praying for you. And here's what he says. We have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of Him or His will. So understand this gnosis and know thyself. It's Paul, he's so smart and he's so strategic here. He's so strategic. He's using what they know in their cultural context and at the temple of Apollos, and it said on there the inscription was, Know thyself. Right, just Socrates would say, just sit there and meditate on yourself and you will hear what you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to do, right? You will fill yourself and you can save yourself. That's what Gnosticism would even get into, that you can save yourselves. And Paul was strategic here. He says, no, I pray that God will fill you, not the gods and goddesses, with knowledge of His will, listen to this, through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. There's a supernatural difference between knowledge and spiritual wisdom. There's a, there's a supernatural difference between knowledge and, and, and wisdom. Knowledge we get from learning, studying, and doing things, right? And that's just the fact of the matter. As I've already pointed out, know thyself. Inscription on the Temple of Apollo, Greek mythology, this is what we're, you know, was being broadcast uh, in, in uh, Colossae and all over the Roman Empire. And we do know scripturally, I'm not going to get into this this morning, but knowledge is a gift from God. We know that to be true. But in the context of this scripture, it, you know, knowledge we get from learning and studying and doing things. Praise God for that, right? We study hard, we learn things. But here's the spiritual side of this. Spiritual wisdom, if we could pull that one up, thank you. Spiritual wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. It can also be translated in that verse, verse 9, through all wisdom given by the Holy Spirit. We want that spiritual wisdom, don't we? We don't want our own knowledge or our own wisdom that amounts to nothing. We want that spiritual wisdom from the Holy Spirit that directs us, that guides us, that helps us make, make uh, spiritual decisions so that we don't get ourselves in spiritual ruts, right? Right? I always say when you want something big, 
sleep on it. When you're about to make a big purchase for anything or whatever, sleep on it. When you walk into the showroom, walk out. I'm just telling you, right? Because they're good. We want that spiritual wisdom of God, right? We want that spiritual wisdom from God where God says, hold the brakes, hold it back. Hey, pull back that reins and that horse. That's what they're there for, right? Pull it back, stop. Go this way, go that way. Go straight, forward, backwards. We want that spiritual wisdom from God. So there's a difference. Knowledge can be learned, but the Spirit gives us wisdom beyond our very years. Paul uses strategic words to combat the devil's schemes, right? Knowledge. Gnosis, they said. Gnosis. That was, I mean, that was all over the place. Know thyself. Know thyself. And Paul uses strategic language to minister to the hearts and minds of the people. Listen, we need spiritual wisdom today so we can recognize the difference between light and in darkness. Friends, there's a word out there. Light, there's, there's the light bulb, and then there's darkness. There's a right, and there's a wrong, right? And the Lord's word tells us what is righteous and right, and what is wrong, and contrary to God's word. They are up in arms in Texas right now because of the heartbeat bill, right? And they say it's a a woman's choice. Well, is it your choice to get a vaccine? Yeah, I am going off the rails a little bit. Let me just tell you my opinion on that. God is an author of life. All right? God is an author of life. And I pray in the spirit of God that the heartbeat bill will go to all 50 states in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, to all 50 states. And they can come out and grow, but we are the light of the world. And we are either about life and light or we're about darkness and unclear thoughts. And so we stand in God's word. And that's another thing. (laughs) You know, whatever. So I'm just saying, you know, we're coming into the Halloween season. And I just want to say this very gently and lightly. So what's Halloween celebrate? Death, gore, torture, murder, blood. Huh. That's something we like to do. And I'm not saying you can't go trick-or-treating, but I'm saying that we can't worship that thing. Blood and gore and torture. You're going to torture somebody? But that's what the, it's a billion, listen to me. It's a multi-billion dollar industry that has ransacked America. And we can go trick-or-treating. We can have fun with our family. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm not like, but we need to have spiritual eyes so we can teach our children that we're not about human sacrifice. Are you hearing me? We're not about blood and gore. Are you hearing me? We're not about torturing people and cutting people's heads off. Because you say, that is what Halloween is. Just saying. Yeah, I got really quiet in here. Hopefully y'all show up next week. I'll be here. We either are for the light, friends, or we're not for the light. We got to, I'm telling you, this world, the things that I heard from a good news source I'm telling you, Jesus is coming back and we better get our faith and our family in order and we better be ready for the trumpet call because he's coming back and he's coming back soon and God's not messing around anymore. The horses have been released. Revelation chapter 4, it starts. I'm telling you. I'm not telling that to scare you. 
I'm telling that to get your faith in order and be the salt and light as we march forward in this world. Spiritual wisdom. I want spiritual wisdom. I want blessing in my home, right? I want blessing in my home. The spiritual wisdom of God blessing my home. Not curses and torture and unbiblical truth invading my space. I don't allow that in my home. I don't know about you. Because I try to walk in the power and authority of Christ. Do I mess up? Absolutely. I mess up miserably at times. But Jesus Christ helps me walk it through, right? Colossians 1, 10 through 12a. And we pray this in order that you may live, now here we go, you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way. How so, Lord? How, how do we do this? Bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may be, that, that you may, excuse me, have great endurance and patience. <laughs> wow, endurance. How do we get endurance? By training, right? We get endurance and strength by, by training. Like you tell me right now, Hey, pastor, get out there and jog three miles today. You'll be doing a funeral on Monday. I, I mean, I want to think I can make it, but I, I've grown in spiritual wisdom. So I might walk a half a mile for the first two weeks before I go that mile, right? Spiritual wisdom. But Paul says we need to build endurance. And more than ever, friends, we need to be, build endurance in the Lord so that we are strengthened to hit these things head on in our lives. And that takes walking in the Lord. That takes reading His Word. That, take, that takes bringing your family to church. That means we, we pray to the Lord. We do devotions. All of these things help us build endurance. And when we build up that endurance, we won't go three miles, we'll go five miles. And before you know it, we're going 26 miles like Jerry Miller. <laughs> that never ran a marathon in his life like seven years ago. Now he's going on number seven. And that's just God. Who removed a tumor from his back and now he runs like Forrest Gump, man. In a good way. I mean that in a good way. He, I'm using his words. He's my good friend. But we need that endurance, friends, and then in, with endurance comes patience. I don't know about you, but I lose my cool. I lose my cool, especially on the road. Lord. And so we need that endurance so that we can have patience, and then we can joyfully give thanks, Paul says, to the Father. And so that endurance is so important as we press forward in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Friends, I say to you as we move to a close this morning, let us not become complacent, but let us grow in spiritual wisdom. I want to close with this verse because this kind of uh, brings it all to a climax in, in uh, uh, Colossians chapter 2, verses 8. This is, you know, Paul kind of threads this theme all the way through, and he says this, and we need to hear these words this morning. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy. Into that cultural context, right? To our cultural context. See to it that no one leads you astray through their fine-sounding arguments, which depends on what? Human tradition. Human wisdom. And the basic principles of this world you know what this world wants to do? They just want to erase everything in the past. Let's just erase it all. Let's just erase it all and start over. Let's just forget about our past. Forget about our history and tear down statues and, you know, hey, just do what the heck we want, like ransack buildings. And Don't let anyone take you captive through fine-sounding arguments. 
that says destruction is the answer. Let's tear it down. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's go this way. Paul says, which depends on human tradition rather than the basic principles of the world, rather than on Christ. Let's stand in prayer this morning. Jesus, I pray that God would arise and the enemy would be scattered. And Lord, we shared a lot this morning, some hard things, but Lord, iron sharpens iron, and Lord, you sharpen us. So may you bless us, mind, body, and soul this day. And as we go out of the house of God today, may we be filled and empowered with your spirit to do your good works. And Lord, I pray for spiritual wisdom on this congregation, Lord. And Lord, those that are listening online, Lord, spiritual wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ right now so that we can discern, Lord, right from wrong, what's righteous and unrighteous, Lord, filled by your spirit. So Lord, help us walk in love. Help us walk in compassion. And Lord Jesus, help us to be the light of the world. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. I'll be out here on Wednesday. I hope you will be.